All right, today we're going to be doing module two, lesson six, and this lesson is going to be very similar to the previous lessons we did for lesson five, except now instead of just decomposing or getting the expanded form of one of my units, I am now going to be doing it for both of my factors, and then my area model is actually going to be increasing in size just a little bit, and I'm going to show you why this is going to help us for our standard algorithm in a bit. So you should be following along on the notes right here. So this is what your notes look like. And you'll see that our area model looks a little bit different right now. The reason why we split it up so much more than last time is that if I were to just show you, let's say I broke down 60 and then four, and then let's say it has 73 at the top. It would be difficult for you in your head to do four times 73 and then 60 times 73. So the way that we did area models first, it's great for smaller numbers, but once we get into these bigger numbers, it becomes difficult for us again and we have to find a new method. So what we're doing right now is we're using the area model to help us break down these numbers into smaller bits that are easier for us to multiply, and then we'll connect that to our standard algorithm to kind of give us a behind the scenes look of what's happening over here. So what I did to get these numbers on the side is I broke down 64, so I broke it down in expanded form, so I have six tens, or 60, and four ones, and then I did the same thing for 73. So 73 has seven tens, or 70, and then three ones, so I put that there. Now, um, when you set up the numbers, usually I like to put the bigger number on top. So when you go to create your own, put the bigger number on top because usually when you do your standard algorithms, it's easier to have the bigger number on top. So let's go ahead and get started with solving in our area model. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my fingers on both ends, meet them together, and I start with 4 times 70. I can think of 4 times 70 as 4 times 7, which is 28. Remember, I also had that 0, so I need to make sure I add that along, and I get a number 280. Then over here, we do 4 times 3, and that gives me 12. And I'm going to show you what happens over here, because it's going to be really important for you to understand why these two numbers are going to help us out. So just like on my area model, I'm going to do 3 times 4. That gives me 12, so I carry that 1, and I leave the 2. Then I do 4 times 70, technically. And 4 times 70 would then also give me that 280. But notice up here I have this 1. This 1 has been carried up until the tens place. So I have 280 plus 1, which gives me 290. So I write 29 right here. If thinking about this in place values is still confusing for you, that's fine. You can still just think of this as 4 times 7, which is 28, and then add 1, which gives you 29, and leave that like that. That is also fine. But what you're going to notice is that this partial product does not yet match this partial product. This is just a broken down version of this. So what I need to do with these two numbers is I need to add them up to then get this number right here. So when I add these up, then this number matches this number here. The reason why we do this is we break it down into smaller parts and it makes it easier for us to add up and find our answer. All right, then for our next part, we now move on to 60 times 70 and 60 times 3. So for 60 times 70, I can just think of this as 6 times 7, which is 42. But remember, I have two zeros that I need to add, so I'll tack on those two extra zeros. And then after that, I have to do 60 times 3. I can think of this as 6 times 3, which is 18. And then again, I add on a 0, because I only have one zero left. So now, in this case, if I were to just be using my, uh, my area model at the moment, I would add together these two numbers, so 4,200 plus 180, and that would tell me what my next um, number, or my next partial product is going to be in the standard algorithm. So add all this together, 
And my next partial product is going to be 4,380. So then over here, fifth grade, I need to start multiplying. So remember, I have to add this zero here because the six is in the tens place. So I do six times three, which is 180. I carry the one, leave the eights. I then do six times seven, which is 42. And then 42 plus one, which gives me 43. And again, I get that partial product of 4,380. I can now add up. So if you were just doing the area model, you would just add up these two partial products. You can do it somewhere over here. So 4,380 plus 292. And I could also just do that in my standard algorithm as well. So when I add up, 2 plus 0 is 2. 9 plus 8 would give me 17. 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 1 is 6. And then 4 plus nothing is just 4. Um, so I have 4,672, and I can also show that same answer over here of 4,672. So that is my final answer. But remember, the reason why we did these bigger area models is so we could break this problem down into easier parts that are simpler for us to solve. Let's move on to our next problem. And for this next problem, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because we now have even larger numbers. So we're taking a three digit number, 814, and we're multiplying it by 39 this time. And again, the reason why we do these different area models is because it would be very difficult for us to do an area model where we have 814 on the top and then nine, and 30 on the sides because then I would have to do 9 times 814 which I can't do that off the top of my head unfortunately and then 30 times 814 right here so that is why we are breaking down our area models and decomposing these numbers even more to help us out so what I'm first going to start with is I'm just going to show the expanded form of 814 so I have 8 in my hundreds place so I'll write 8 hundreds plus I have one in my tens place so I'll write ten plus I have four ones so I write four ones right there then I have three in my tens place over in my 39 so I'll write 30 so that's three tens and then I have nine in my ones place so that is nine now remember on the top of my area model I usually like to have the bigger number first this is going to be a bigger area model, so make sure you give yourself plenty of space when you're creating this on your worksheet along with me. So what I'm first going to start with is I'm going to write my number 800 plus 10 plus 4. So I'll write my bigger number up on the top of my area model. And then after that, wherever I see a plus sign, I'll draw a line straight down to show the different sections of my area model. Then kind of starting the backwards or opposite way, um, I'll write nine plus 30 on the side, because that would be 30 plus nine on the side, so 39. And then again, where I see that plus sign, I'll draw a line straight across to show all the different parts. Now again, I'll have my standard algorithm off to the side, so I have 814 times 39, and I'll start solving from there. The reason why I like to have this 9 on the top, or the 1's place on the top, is that when I'm multiplying in my standard algorithm, what I'm starting with is this 9. I'm not starting with the 30, so even though I, I could get the same answer, I like to connect these models to what I'm doing in my standard algorithm. So that's why we have that 9 on top here. So I could do 9 times 4, 9 times 10, and then 9 times 800. So it's not backwards from my uh, standard algorithm. All right, so let's go ahead and start multiplying in our area model. So we have 9 times 800 first. So I can think of this as just 9 times 8. 9 times 8 is 72. But there are two zeros left over, so I need to add those on. Then I move over to 9 times 10. I just think of this as 9 times 1, which is 9. And then I add that 0. And then finally, we think of 9 times 4, and that's just 36. Remember that these three numbers right here, you're not going to see all three of these numbers right here in our partial product. 
these three numbers need to be added together to create the partial product that you're going to see right there. So I'm going to add these together so I can check in my standard algorithm later if I'm doing this all correctly. All right, so let's go ahead and start adding these. So I have 0 plus 0 plus 6 is 6. 9 plus 3 will give me 12. 1 plus 2 is 3. And then 7 plus nothing is 7. So my first partial product should be 7,326. So let's see if I get that over here. So I do 9 times 4, which we said is 36. So I carry the 3. I leave the 6. Then I do 1 times 9, which is 9. And then 9 plus 3, which is 12. So I carry the 1 and I leave the 2. Then I do 9 times 8, which we said is 72, plus 1, which would give us 73. So we have 7,326. These match, so I know I'm on the right track. Now let's move on back to our area model. And now I'm multiplying 30 by 814, just like you see here in my area model. I'm doing 30 times 814. So let's start with 30 times 800. I can think of this first as just 3 times 4, which is 24. And then I have to add 1, 2, 3 zeros. And then I get an answer of 24,000 for this first part of my area model. Then I have to do 30 times 10, so I can think of that as just 3 times 1, which is 3. And then I add 2 zeros. Finally, I need to do 30 times 4, so 3 times 4 is 12, and then I add on that one last zero, so I get 120. Just like last time, these three numbers are not going to show up right here in my partial product, but if I add all three of these together, this should match the number I get in my partial product later. So, we have 24,000 plus 300, and remember it's very important we line up everything up by the correct place value, plus 120, and I can go ahead and start adding, and my next partial product should be 24,420. You can use these partial products to actually help you remember that you need to have this zero before you can continue multiplying in your standard algorithm. So you do all this work over here, use it to help you out when you go over here, especially with remembering to put that zero in. So I'm going to start by doing 3 or 30 times 4, so that's why I have the zero. So 3 times 4 is 12. Carry the 1, leave the 2. 3 times 1 is 3, and then 3 plus 1 is 4. Then we have 3 times 8, which is 24, so I'll just write 24 there. And then, again, I get that partial product to 24,420, which matches the one I found from your area model, so I know I'm on the right track. And then I will start adding up. So 6 plus nothing is 6, 2 plus 2 is 4, 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 plus 4 is 11, and 1 plus 2 is 3. This gives me a final answer of 31,746. So from the line, you can go ahead and write that answer. Again, it's very important that we use the area model to help us out with this because we're starting to get into these really big numbers and they're only going to get bigger. So using the area model helps us keep track of all our partial products and all different parts of this problem. So we can hopefully make less mistakes. So your job now is you're going to be trying the you try problem on the back. This problem is very similar to the problem that you are actually seeing right now on the board because this problem oh my gosh sorry okay my computer's been crazy so fifth grade this problem that you're seeing on the board right here is actually very very similar to the problem um, that you're going to be doing for your you try it's a three digit number times a two digit number just like this is a three digit number times a two-digit number. So use this area model to help you figure out the answer or how you need to set up your area model um, for this as well. So go ahead and finish the you try problem and then check in with me when you are done. Awesome job today, fifth grades, and good luck.